You're listening to In the Balance, an Iowa Judicial Branch podcast. Welcome to the inaugural episode of In the Balance, a podcast dedicated to exploring Iowa's judicial branch. We are proud of our open court system, welcoming Iowans into our courtrooms across the state to witness Iowa's courts in action. This podcast was created to expand on our promise of open and transparent courts, taking you beyond the courtroom to learn about the past, present, and future of Iowa's judicial system and the many people who keep our state's courts operating efficiently and fairly. Our first episode features a 2011 recording when the Iowa Judicial Branch opened its doors to WHO radio show hosts Van and Bonnie and their listeners. Recorded live from the Supreme Court courtroom, Van and Bonnie spent the morning interviewing judges and justices about their roles in Iowa's appellate courts and providing answers to their listeners' questions. Up first, Van and Bonnie interview Chief Justice Mark Cady, Justice David Wiggins, and Court of Appeals Judge Amanda Potterfield. All right, 736 with Van and Bonnie in the morning here at WHO. This is a real pleasure to be able to do this because this is Iowa's building. This is our building, and uh, the Supreme Court invited us to come here and bring our Van and Bonnie listeners, and we've had a lot of listeners here, a lot of pictures being taken, and uh, this is a majestic room, isn't it? You know, it is, and one thing that I didn't realize, and I, I know they said they were going to give tours of the building. I didn't realize the justices would be giving the tours yeah. themselves. I mean, how awesome is that? Yeah, terrific. So you not only do you get a tour, the building you get to chat with them while you're taking the tour and find ask all the questions you want to find out answers to. And not only the justices of the Supreme Court, but we have uh, Court of Appeals judges here too. For example, Amanda Potterfield is here. Judge Potterfield, it's nice to see you. Very nice to see you and thank you very much for being here today. Now educate us, uh, we've got the Supreme Court and I think people understand basically the principle of that, but what about this appellate thing? How do these two interact and, and how does this work? Well, our court is what we call an intermediate court of appeals. And so that places us in the hierarchy between the trial bench and the Supreme Court justices. We were created by statute in 1976 to help ease some of the workload of cases from the Supreme Court. And our cases come, we are, they're transferred from the Supreme Court so that a, a person who has a case in court will take an appeal to the Supreme Court but the Supreme Court may transfer that to the Court of Appeals for our decision. So any court, any, any case you have came from them? That's right. I see. And we do all of the different kind of cases that the Supreme Court does. And you're in the same building here, obviously. That's right. Our courtroom is right downstairs on the third floor. It's also open, as are all of the courtrooms in the state of Iowa. Well, and we have uh, two of the justices from the Supreme Court with us. We've got Justice David Wiggins, who is no stranger to the WHO radio microphone, because one time you filled in for Bonnie for four hours. Yeah, I did, and it, I did, and it's a tough job. It's not, yeah. as, easy, <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. That was the <laughs> roughest part, getting up early in the morning. No, that was the easiest. That was the easiest part? <laughs> After I did the weather the first time, Van said, no more weather for you. No. <laughs> well, and also, Chief Justice Mark Cady is with us. And you guys, we three have something in common. We all went to Drake. That's true. I didn't realize that, the, that both of you had gone to Drake. I, I went both undergrad and law school. Yeah, so. that's great. Now, I have a question, because we've, we've talked a lot of serious stuff with the different justices. But I want to know, these chairs that are all sitting in here, can anybody come in and just watch the proceedings? Absolutely. That's part of the beauty of our uh, court system, is that the courthouse doors are open to everyone. And uh, every proceeding we have is a public proceeding, and the public uh, uh, is always invited. Somebody was asking us about robes a little bit ago, and we didn't know what to tell them. You guys wear robes during the proceedings? or During our court proceedings, we do wear robes. And uh, uh, not only is the, I want to just add this, to, I'll give us ourselves a plug here. Not only is the courtroom open, but on May 18th, we're going to be in Cedar Rapids uh, having court one evening at uh, Prairie High School. Ah, okay. Now, I know these times are hard economic times. Does that hit the judicial branch as well? It does, unfortunately. Um, and uh, we're doing the best that we can with the resources uh, that, that we have. Um, and 
we've had to uh, streamline, we've had to do uh, things differently, and we have to rely upon our great employees to step forward and, and uh, do more than they, they have before. So but is that going to get better or worse? Well, we're hoping it's going to get better. I think uh, we're all, everyone in the state's hoping that uh, things will improve. Yeah. So is there something going on in this room every day or once a week? Or how, how often do you hear arguments? Uh, we hear arguments uh, eight or nine times uh, throughout, the, throughout the year, three days at a time. So we're not in the courtroom working all the time. Once we hear our cases, we have to go back and not only decide them, but author opinions. Uh, which can take uh, quite a bit of time to research and make sure that the opinions that, that, we, uh, that we decide are done uh, in a manner that's consistent with the, the law and our Constitution. So where do people find out when something's happening in this room? Well, we have a great website, and uh, you can go on our website, which is uh, iowacourts.com, and our schedule is printed, and the Court of Appeals uh, schedule is printed, and school groups can come down. We oftentimes find our courtroom filled with uh, school kids, and the public is always invited. Now, of the seven justices, you two gentlemen have been here longer than any, right? That's, Correct. That's right. How uh, many years for you? I've been here. I started in uh, 1998, and Justice Wiggins was... 2003. Okay, so uh, how have things changed? Well, when I started, it was a nine-member court, um, and we're a seven-member court now. And at the same time uh, that we decreased from nine to seven, the Court of Appeals increased from six judges to, to nine judges. So that's one part of it. And of course, uh, moving from the Capitol uh, over to this great building in 2003 has been a, was a substantial change, but a, a pleasant one, of course. Anybody that's paid any attention to uh, local news knows that uh, you guys have been in the news a lot more than I ever remember in the last couple of years. And uh, I'm guessing that's probably not what you want to do necessarily. Is that right? Well, that's not the way that we've, uh, we're accustomed to doing our work. We, we usually uh, do it in the background. Um, well, especially for you after having been here so many years. I mean, what you've seen the last couple of years has got to be the biggest attention you guys have ever had. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, but... I, I think ultimately it's a good thing. It's a, I think the more the public sees uh, our courts and see how they operate, the more they will appreciate it, uh, what, we, what we have here in Iowa. One thing that you hear a lot from some people is that, well, these people legislate from their court room. What, what do you say to that? Well, I think that's a misunderstanding. Our, our function is to interpret the laws as written by the legislature and to make sure that the laws as written by the legislature and executed by the executive branch uh, follow the constitutional guidelines of the United States and the Iowa Constitution. Um, otherwise, we're deciding cases that our personal views, we probably don't agree with a lot. You know, we're all diverse, so I'm sure at least on every case there's someone who didn't agree with the outcome, but we have to do what the legislature tells us to do, and that's our function. And sometimes, you know, when the legislature doesn't agree with us, they change the law in the next year. Um, and then you've got to be up on that. Correct. And then if there's a constitutional question they don't agree upon, then they, the people of the state of Iowa have a right to amend the Constitution. But that's, that's our, our core function is to uphold the Constitution. And so how much time do you guys spend with the Constitution? I mean, how, do you review it frequently or what? Well, that's, it's, that's part of our... One of our most, if not our most important function is to uphold the Constitution. So whenever a case presents a constitutional issue, which is quite frequently, um, it's our obligation to apply that Constitution to, the, to that case that's before us. So do you do that for the United States Constitution or the Iowa Constitution or both? You do it for both Constitutions. And when you're, you're reviewing the Constitutions, you're also looking at the, the background documents, the debates, the Iowa, there's... There's hundreds of pages of debates, and the Iowa Constitution was in, when it was enacted in 1857. You have the Federalist Papers, of course, that go along with the Federal Constitution. You know, so you even go back to those areas when there's no no real law or no real, you know, apparent answer from just reading the text. What do you have coming up in decisions anyway? What kind of cases are you looking at? Well, uh, we don't. Uh, design the cases they they come to us so um, you don't even know some of them that 
Oh no, uh, everything starts at the local level in the county courthouses from around the state and we get about uh, 2,000 appeals uh, a year. And as uh, Judge Potterfield mentioned, we sort through each one of those appeals and uh, we decide which cases we'll retain and, and decide and then we transfer uh, the rest of the court. How would you decide which ones to send to her? Yeah. Well, there's uh, five guidelines that we generally function under. A, a case that presents a t constitutional issue, we believe uh, our state's highest court should decide. A case that presents uh, an interpretation of our, uh, one of our statutes will decide. A case that involves an important um, uh, public policy issue, a case that involves a ca an issue of first impression, and then we hear and decide all attorney disciplinary actions. Hmm. So those are the five categories, uh, basically. Well, we want to say thank you for allowing us to do this because this is a little outside the box. I don't know that anybody's ever done anything quite like this before, but you guys made the invitation. And we're thrilled to uh, let Iowans come in and uh, witness and what's happening and uh, see the building. And you've answered a lot of questions already today, and you're not done yet. Well, we're not. We'll, we'll be here until you're done. So. <laughs> Very good. Thank you have, so well, much. Well, we did have one more question. We wanted to know how you decide who sits where. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was decided uh, for us uh, by our... Our, 200 years ago. Uh, yeah, 200 years ago. The, the Chief really? Justice uh, sits in the middle, and then we sit according to seniority uh, after that with uh, the senior most justice, which is uh, Justice Wiggins sits to my left, and then the next senior justice sits to my, or sits to my right, the le next senior justice sits to my left, and then we go in that order, uh, right, left. Well, thank you All for right. letting us do this. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Great day, you bet. 7.46 here at WHO with Van and Bonnie in the morning. While broadcasting live from the Supreme Court courtroom in 2011, Van and Bonnie invited their listeners to drop by the Judicial Branch building, then only eight years old, for tours led by the judges and justices. Tour goers were able to meet members of Iowa's highest courts, ask questions, and take pictures all while Vanna Bonnie broadcasted a live radio show from the courtroom. In the final interview of the day, Van and Bonnie spoke with Justice Brent Apple and Court of Appeals Judge Mary Tabor. Good morning, everybody. It's 835 here at WHO. A little Perry Mason in the background there. Yes, I got that one right the first time. I had never, ever mm -hmm. lost a case. No. Ever. No. Yeah. It always looked like he was going to. Things yeah. were getting very dire. And then all of a sudden, ah, the missing piece. He pulled piece the rabbit of, out of the hat. Yes, the That's missing right. piece of evidence. We've had fun today playing uh, theme songs from TV shows that have court settings because we're here at the Supreme Court. And this has been a wonderful day. I can't believe we're almost done already, but you can still come and visit until 9 o'clock this morning. We're in the Judicial Building, which is right across the street south of the Iowa State Capitol Building. and uh, On Court Avenue. That's right. And we're thankful that uh, they let us do this, but they are pointing out, hey, this is the people's building. This That's is the right. people's business here, and everybody ought to be able to come and see what goes on and uh, watch what goes on. And uh, they've been very, very good about uh, They've been touring, and uh, the justices and judges have been answering questions. And yeah, did you, did you ever know you were going to grow up to be a tour guide? <laughs> well, uh, uh, I certainly enjoyed it. Uh, I think uh, one of the things that we justices and judges need to do is uh, interact with our citizens and, and share with them how we do our business, and this has been a great opportunity to do so. You've been doing a great job of that. That's Justice Brent Apple. from. Uh, you're from Ackworth, right? Uh, you, I noticed that uh, judges are from all around. I mean, uh, you're not from uh, all one place? Uh, that's true. Uh, we've got uh, judges from uh, uh, the Sioux City area and Davenport and Waterloo and, and Ackworth and also in central Iowa. And so uh, uh, we have a, a very uh, uh, exciting group of people, I think, and the Court of Appeals has the same kind of uh, geographic diversity. You've been here for quite a while compared to everybody else. I mean, you've been here since 2006 when you first got appointed? That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and how does this work? Are you, is that a lifetime appointment or you have a, a certain term or what? No, uh, after you're uh, appointed, uh, you stand for uh, a retention election at the next general election. And so in 2008, after my appointment, I stood for retention election and was retained. And then you have an eight year term. And so I'll be up for another retention election in 2016. So I'll ask you a loaded question. How do you like this job? Well, I uh, really enjoy the adjudicative responsibilities. I think uh, uh, the judges that I interact with on a daily basis, my colleagues, 
um, and also judges throughout the state do a marvelous job of uh, being fair and impartial adjudicators. And I think I would share with the citizens of Iowa that, that the fair and impartial courts that we have are, are just a real jewel. You go around the United States and you don't always have that. And, and uh, I think the, the judges that I work with do a marvelous job and frankly I'm humbled and pleased to be part of that. So how does this work when a case comes before you and there are seven of you sitting up here and they come and they argue their case before you and then what happens? Well, after the oral argument, we retreat in our conference room, which is about 20 feet away from the courthouse itself, or from the courtroom itself, and uh, a presenter of the court, one member of the court, presents the case to the seven members of the Supreme Court and will say, for example, well, this is Smith versus State, it's a criminal case, uh, and I have reviewed the record and so forth, and I think we should affirm for this reason or that reason. We then go counterclockwise around the table, and each person has an opportunity to speak. Uh, this uh, informal tradition ensures that all seven members of the court have an opportunity to weigh in um, in, the, in the discussion at the conference. Uh, then the presenter determines whether or not uh, he or she has a majority. And if there's a majority on the court, that person will write the opinion and gets to work uh, on the very difficult task of writing a, a judicial opinion. Uh, after uh, the draft is done, it gets recirculated to the other members of the court for criticism, and the criticism flows in generously. Uh, and the uh, the drafter can. Oh, well, that's why you're here. The drafter can decide whether to ac to accept or not accept, and then it goes back to the judicial conference, the seven of us, for final approval. Um, we work very hard to uh, get the best quality product we can, uh, and we try to involve all seven judges on the Supreme Court in every case. Uh, this takes some time, uh, but we think it's worth it. You know, there you just went through a process where you got some new justices, three of them, and uh, there were a lot of people that wanted that job, and a lot of people maybe were uh, uh, attorneys or uh, judges uh, below this level, but they like to rise up to the top to be a Supreme Court justice. My question is, what does a Supreme Court justice want to do next? Do most of them, most of them just want to retire from that job? Or, I mean, do they want to go to a federal thing or what? Oh, I think most of us uh, just want to do the very best job they can with the challenging uh, portfolio that, that we are given. The cases that we decide are of great importance to the parties themselves. Uh, and I think all of our ambition is to do the very best job we can on each and every case that comes before us. Also, uh, the Court of Appeals is in this building, and Judge Mary Tabor is here. Hi. Good morning. This is uh, an interesting place to work. It certainly is, and um, we heard you talking about gavels earlier, so one of my colleagues, Judge Danielson, sent oh. this little <laughs> gift you along go, for ben. you. Oh, a mini gavel. Look at that. Oh, good. Don't ba bang that, that on there. I want to hear that. That doesn't have quite Did, the Not quite the ring that that one, one. is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that but it's nice cute. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like being a judge? Well, I've just been on the Court of Appeals for about a year now, so I'm just kind of finding that out. But it's very exciting, and it's a great honor. And as Justice Apple said, you know, the cases we hear are very important to the, to the parties in them, and, you know, we keep that close to heart when we're deciding how the case should turn out. Is there another courtroom in this building separate from this one that you folks there, do business there is. with? There is. Uh, our Court of Appeals meets on the third floor of the Judicial Building, and the Supreme Court meets up here on the fourth floor where you're broadcasting from this morning. So we have our own courtroom, and we have nine judges on our court, so we sit in panels of three. So our courtroom's a little more intimate. Um, uh, the, the litigants are just being asked questions by three people rather than seven at a time. So, And we have an independent caseload, and we handle a real high volume of cases. No, they, because we were just talking with the justices up here, and they said they, that they hear cases about nine times a year and then they're in court three days for each one of those cases so do you have are you guys actually in the courtroom more are, than than these guys are we are um, a little more and our our schedule is approximately the same we hear cases about 10 months out of the year and, and don't hear arguments in in july and august and okay. your, your workload comes from them, doesn't it? I it, mean, don't they hand them down to you? It does. They decide which cases to transfer to us. And then once the cases are decided by our court, um, the lawyers and litigants have an opportunity to ask for further review if they're unhappy with how the results were in our court, and then they can ask for the... So they can bounce it back up again? They, they can try. The Supreme what? Court takes only about 10% of those. But Okay. I was going to ask what the percentage was that were bounced back up. Right. And, and so the... 
you know, the vast majority of cases we decide, um, you know, we're the court of last resort for those cases. You know, we have a lot of uh, young people that listen to this program, and I want to ask each of you to answer this question. Uh, there are people that would, uh, probably young people that would love to have a job like this, and they think it uh, looks like something that would be fulfilling to them. What should they do at this point? Well, and it's been nice this morning. We've had some um, students come through who have aspirations to be lawyers and to be judges. Um, and, I, and I would, you know, encourage them to follow that dream because, you know, I've loved being a lawyer. It's exciting to be in the court. And I, I think that's, being law day, I think it's a, a very sort of worthy occupation to strive for. I'd follow up on the law day comment. Uh, uh, President Eisenhower in 1958 uh, started the first law day. Um, and... Uh, there's a great little story behind it. Charles Ryan, who was the ABA uh, president at the time, uh, had a declaration drawn up, and he personally knew the president. But Sherman Adams, his chief of staff, uh, pocketed the, the proclamation, and uh, he uh, didn't want to issue it because uh, uh, he just didn't like the flavor of it. And Eisenhower found out about it and said, where is that proclamation? Does only General Eisenhower would. And, and uh, Mr. Ryan presented him with the proclamation, and and uh, basically, the proclamation said uh, that the rule of law was important in a democratic society, and it should be uh, recognized as one of our foundational principles. And Ike uh, looked at it and said, I like it. I'm signing it, and, and signed it right then. And, and, and the rest is history. We've had Law Day uh, now for every, every year since 1958. And for the young people, I would say that, that the rule of law, which is impartial and fair justice administered uh, by the courts, is just a fundamental foundational principle. Uh, and uh, for them to want to be a part of that uh, court system is a, is a high aspiration. And uh, I look forward someday to seeing the young people sitting in my chair. It must be very interesting for you being one third of the, you know, being the judicial branch as opposed to the legislative and the uh, executive to watch what the other two branches do. Well, uh, we pretty much stick to our own business. Uh, we believe in the separation of powers, and so when the cases come our way, we decide them based on the law and facts, and uh, the governor and the legislature can proceed with their business. And they do. And they do. <laughs> <laughs> Although sometimes it takes a while to wrap it up, I notice. <laughs> Thank you to both of you for being here today, and I know you've been speaking with a lot of people that came in. Well, I want to make sure that uh, we at the Judicial Branch thank you for, for coming here and, uh, and allowing us to uh, appear on your program. And I think the, a lot of citizens of Iowa had an opportunity to hear uh, members of our court uh, and come down and visit. And uh, this is the People's Court, and we thank you for being a part of it. And Judge Tabor, thank you Yeah, very thank much. you for being here. And thanks also to the Polk County Bar Association. was nice to provide the refreshments yes. downstairs. So mm -hmm. Yeah, they know their donuts, well. don't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did a good job of that. So, but thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. You thank, you. thank you. You've been listening to In the Balance, an Iowa Judicial Branch podcast hosted and produced by me, Marissa Gall. If you would like more information about Iowa's courts, you can visit www.iowacourts.gov. You can also follow the Iowa Judicial Branch on Twitter and YouTube at Iowa Courts. This episode of In the Balance is now adjourned. Until next time. <laughs>